Hello everybody, it's Jason, and I'm officially back for another entertaining video. So as I always start, I would like to thank all of you for being here. I'd love to thank the past subscribers and the new subscribers. Boy, you're sure surprising me with the numbers and the support and the comments. Um, when I have a bad day, your comments somehow always get me through. As to the outfit, it is seven degrees here. I'm freezing, even though my heat's on full blast. It's extremely cold. So I put on my awesome hat and uh, my awesome jacket. And here we are. So thanks for joining me. Um, I wrote down a whole bunch of things again that I wanted to cover from my last video that I seemingly always forget. And again, I don't want to do it, <laughs> so I'm not going to. Um, first and foremost, in the last video, I said that there were uncertain cards dealt to me. And I like to keep this channel honest, um, but positive. So don't ever be concerned um, for me if I say something um, that might seem um, like I'm having a bad day or something. Um, if I'm having a bad day, I just won't do a video. <laughs> So, um, anyways, I appreciate your support and your concern, um, but don't ever worry about me. It's just um, some uncertain things uh, just in, um, you know, career path and uh, just in life in general, you know? So, um, but I have an incredible and strong, loyal, incredible, strong partner, Jeremy, who seemingly always helps me navigate things and always helps me um, maintain my positive mindset. So um, don't ever worry about me. And I appreciate all your support and your love. Um, as to comments, I'm trying to keep up with responding to all the comments. And I'm doing a fairly good job, I would say. But um, if there's ever a time when I just give a thumbs up or a heart, know that I've read your comment. Um, and they're all very important to me. So please keep them coming. Um, big news, by the way. Big, big news. So in the first few minutes, I just want to get this done and then go over to the light box right away. Because this video is going to be a challenge for me, but it's going to be quite amazing. It's on my Cameo collection and only a portion of my Cameo collection. So um, only a very small portion. Um, but big news. So I'll be supplying um, an email address, which I know I've said a million times, but I will be supplying an email address or I'm going to go get a secondary cell phone and be supplying a cell phone number. I have reservations about how far I'm going to go with communication for right now, just because of my schedule. So you understand at the auction house, I'm extremely booked right now. And I'm also going through a major downsize of my own collections. So there's going to be quite a delay in me responding to an email. So I thought if I get a secondary device, like a cell phone that I can provide, then people can call or text. And I know that's going to be tricky, but, and a lot to keep up with. So I'm just in the formative um, timing of what I'm going to do for communication. Okay. And I don't know what email address to use because one is work, another is eBay, another is personal. And I didn't really want a fourth one because I can't even keep up with the three that I have right now. So, and I didn't want to disappoint people by supplying an email that I don't answer, you know? So I'm working that out because I know that you want to reach out to me and I absolutely want to hear from all of you. The easiest way to reach out to me is in the comments below. All right. So just leave me a comment and I'll be sure to respond and just give me some time. With all that said, I will be giving you my eBay seller ID. I am, again, I'm not at that point just yet because I didn't want to use this channel to promote my business. And um, that's because I have other things that I want to use this channel for, which is educational. Uh, I had said my YouTube user ID on someone else's channel one time, and in two days, I sold like $1,680, $1,682 in items. So I loved it, and it was great for business. But again, it's not really my intention, but I am going to supply you in the next video with my eBay user ID, and you can then shop my items and see what I have for sale. All right? Um, so that'll make you very happy, I'm sure, because all of you have asked. So yes, in the next video, eBay user ID, 
and then you can shop my items on there. Please do not use my eBay to contact me in regards to questions that you have, okay? Just don't do it because I'm probably never going to answer it, all right? I keep my eBay very business related, all right? So um, thank you so much for understanding that. Uh, I'm also going to be going live soon. So I'm going to go live this week at some point, hopefully like Tuesday or Wednesday. I'm hopeful more for Wednesday because my Tuesday is going to be extremely busy at the gallery. So I'm hopeful for Wednesday. And then I'm going to do, I believe, two more lives pretty quick after that. And I think on the 21st, which is a Sunday, I think I'm going live with Thelma at Thelma Thrift. I believe that I am on the 21st, I think, um, possibly. <laughs> so I hope so. Um, and then I'll be going on with a few other of my friends and then also my solo edition. And I hope that the lives will go well. I'm going to try it anyway for like questions and answers ab about me. So I'm not just talking at a camera. So we have a dialogue, which I feel much more comfortable with in real life. Um, the last thing that I wanted to talk about is I might eventually sell on YouTube. I said I wouldn't. Uh, and all of a sudden, because of the outpouring on some of my videos of some of the things that I've shown and people wanting to purchase them, I feel guilty that I'm not allowing people to purchase things that I, that they want to. So I will be eventually probably selling on YouTube. I also was very surprised by the outpouring of love for my art and my jewelry creations. So now I'm thinking of potentially going back into the studio and custom making items to bring them on to sell to all of you. If you're interested in that, I think that's a route that I'm definitely interested in taking. I would most certainly then start videos taking you into my studio and seeing my silversmithing and seeing the way I create things and then bringing those things that I create onto a live sale. And they would probably be a buy it now, like a fixed price. And then I could custom size them or custom make something for people. So I was um, very inspired by your outpouring for love with my creations. So that's enough on that, but I'll likely be doing that. A few things on my desk. I didn't get carried away. Uh, one necklace that um, I found in my stuff as I was downsizing. Look at this collar. Isn't this thing incredible? Um, I, I don't really know what to say about it, but uh, I've always loved the color. I've always loved the size and the scale of it. It was something that I only wore once or twice uh, because, you know, currently it doesn't go with the beard. <laughs> so I, uh, you know, I loved this. It was uh, extremely well made, rhinestone, rhodium plated, and I think I bought it in like 1992, 1992 or 1995, but um, I really thought that thing was so cool. And I found it when I was packing, and I decided, you know, in my downsize, it's hard to make decisions on what to sell and what to keep, but um, I decided that that's still going to go with me just because it brought me fond memories of years ago, you know, and decades ago of what I used to do, you know, that apparently I'm still doing these days, but just doing it different. Um, a ring that I brought, two rings, two creations that I brought on um, one of my shorts. And unfortunately, in my short feeds, I, I want to explain something. Um, it doesn't give me enough time. One minute doesn't give me enough time to tell the whole story. So what I'm using the shorts for, which is a whole new creative outlet for me, it is refreshing. It's keeping me invested in my art. It's keeping me invested in my passion and love for certain music, certain artists. And it's giving me the ability to do things quickly and create things quickly that I don't have the time for creative process very often now. And it's a, a gift and a blessing, and I, I love putting these together. So if you see a short and it's abstract or it's artistic and you're like, what is he going for? Don't feel alone. Um, my story is there. And then I eventually try and bring the pieces onto a longer feed, which is like this. So this ring was in one of my shorts, and it is a ring that I constructed in, I believe, 2008, and I, uh, let me take this other one off. I do wear this frequently 
And um, it is a cigarette butts um, and diamonds. And the diamonds rock back and forth. And they travel amongst the cigarette butts. And it's sterling silver. I will bring it over to the light box just for a few minutes before I start the cameo collection. And you'll see that up close. It's a long, complex story as to where the cigarettes came from, who smoked them, and um, why I made it into a reliquary. So there's a... Um, a story there that, again, I'm a conceptual artist, so sometimes my end result just isn't fashionable and pretty to wear. It actually has a story to tell, and that's one of them. Um, this other ring, same thing. Um, it's gigantic, and I, I know that people couldn't see the scale of it in my short, but it's um, a ring, so it slips on like that, and it is made out of sterling silver, so the band is sterling. And then these articulating and moving tubes of sterling silver, which are way in there, their tubes of sterling silver are then in, um, inset with alpaca fur. No animals are ever hurt in my creations. Alpaca fur, which was trimmed by one of my friends. She has a farm. And then these are painted and drawings and photographs of my eyes and my hair that are photo processed onto tissue paper, which is then rolled into kind of these funnel shapes. And the very ends kind of reminiscent, the end result is kind of reminiscent of a lotus or a water lily. And then the, the um, alpaca fur was supposed to look like smoke was supposed to look like um, fumes or smoke, very heavenly. And again, there's a story there, but the movement of the ring and the scale of it, you know, completely unwearable because it's very fragile, you know, being made out of paper and um, being something ephemeral and something fragile um, isn't for everyday wear. And it wasn't meant to be. It was just meant to be um, a wearable sculpture. Um, and that's what I was trained at doing at the university, was making these things that not only were beautiful and well-crafted, but told a story. And, um, you know, a lot of times in my videos, I um, um, um a lot. I think why that is, I do struggle for the right human words. And as a person who was born to be an artist, I was born to create things rather than use the English language to communicate my feelings or my life or my experiences. And this is a testament to a time in my life when um, emotion and life and just basic living was complex, but still extremely beautiful, heavenly, and I was affected at this time by several different people. And there were four specifically that I did an art show about. And um, this was kind of the grand finale of that body of work. And then I progressed forward in life and was able to move past certain experiences by this ring. And of course, there I go again, struggling to explain this, but um, I don't think such creations need the English language to explain. And uh, that's one of them. So I hope you love that. I hope it makes slightly more sense now. And I did um, bring the photographs over to the light box um, to talk about the photographs that were in that short as well. My jewelry that I'm wearing, a Navajo a turquoise pendant necklace, a ring by Bora, B-O-R-A, one of my favorite contemporary artists, sterling silver, 24 karat gold, and an incredible crystal gemstone with a very large inclusion growing through it. My normal diamond ring, or I should say my usual, this um, Norwegian bracelet that I thought was so modern and so beautiful, and then a Navajo, very early hand-forged turquoise cuff that you're not going to be able to see, so I'll show you in the light box. And then just two other pieces of physical things were this Chinese jar, and um, I have, again, a little bit of a tendency to reach out for Chinese and Japanese items. And when they're unusual in their style, their age, and their presentation, I will be a consumer. And this is going to move with me. So before I packed it up for the move, I thought I would show it. It's just very, very beautiful. Um, it is older. I'm not exactly sure of the age on this. The bottom does show quite a bit of wear. Um, so we've got quite a bit of wear on the bottom. And 
Um, the glaze, the way the glaze has settled on the surface, sorry that the light is going to wash out the detail, but again, something that I'm not exactly sure on the age, definitely Chinese, uh, and it, it just, um, it came out of a very important collection, and it was something that I thought, it's definitely moving with me. So that's going to go with me. And then another vase that, um, before I packed it up, I just wanted to bring it back. I did put this in one of my shorts, and people had responded, and collectors of art glass know that I have a great holding of Lotz. And this is a Lotz glass, L-O-E-T-Z, Lotz, L-O-E-T-Z, art glass vase. And it is one of the most incredible. I think this this was produced in 19... I'm going to blank out here for a second. 1909 or 1911. But can you imagine this being well over 100 years old and looking like it was made in the 50s or 60s? Or it was made yesterday. But, you know, did this person time travel? Or were they just that ahead of their time? And what does that say about our artistry today, you know, how behind we are, you know, but I won't get into that commentary because I'm a contemporary artist as well. Uh, but I am looking over my shoulder all the time. But this vase is incredible. And I paid, um, I never talk price on my channel, uh, but I will start. Um, I paid, I think I paid $1,100, $1,100 ish. I would gladly pay that all day long for something like this. And again, do I think Lotz is going to go up in value? I think Lotz has a great potential to go up in value, but the most unusual examples and the most sizable examples of any given artist is probably going to rise in value. Um, and this with its end result of that electric lime green with the metallic on this like tomato red, that vibration, that visual vibration and that beautiful form um, had me, just absolutely had me. And I do have other Lotz glass that is more rare and more valuable. But again, we'll get into those at a later video. I'm going to pause you now and I'm going to go over to the light box and bring you the cameo presentation I promised. Give me one second. Hold on.